welcome back to the Prepared Mindset Podcast. It's Austin back again, and I have uh, a special guest this episode. Uh, my fr- my good friend Spencer is here with me. How's it going, man? Oh, good. How are you, man? How Dude, you doing? good. Yeah. Good. I'm excited. This is when we when Sam and I are planning this this whole thing out. This is actually you should feel special. You're one of like the people that was like first in my mind on, oh, yeah? uh, on guests to bring on. Like, dude, he knows stuff. He'd be great to have on. Man, stop, man. You're making me right <laughs> over here. Um, but um, we talk a lot on a lot of the other episodes and stuff about uh, being prepared medically. Uh, Sam and I just did an episode on gear. And I know, mm-hmm. you know, everyday carry stuff was a, one of our first few episodes. Um, <clears throat> and we talk about medical and having those kinds of supplies and even if you don't know how to use it somebody somebody else might right um because you never know when you're going to be in an accident right. um and honestly i mean ask anybody who was in one if they knew they were going to be in one mm-hmm. they would have been someplace else right <laughs> right, right. Who, who, whoever's prepared for an accident must have made it happen that's right the way I see exactly it, so. you know so that's a huge part of uh preparation and that's um you know, and I, I try to not make everything so firearm centric, you know, and that's just the way I end up going with it sometimes. But, um, you know, you're an EMT, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yep. So I wanted you to come on and like, you know, we'll talk a little bit, share some stories, uh, some insight, talk a little bit about what, you know, you carry around with you. Um, you know, cause I, I don't know if I've even talked about this before. I have like a, an, a first aid kit I keep uh, in my car strapped to the back of my headrest. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That has just like a cat tourniquet and then a basic like blowout kit. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, I think I got a chest seal or two in there. I got clotting agent and gauze. You know, nothing. Uh, and I think gloves, like two pairs of rubber gloves. Nothing. The most important piece. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I mean, not. got to protect yourself. I should. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I think it's probably the most overlooked. People are like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the first know. thing you learn in EMT school, you know. You go Glove up. Uh, yep. Uh, we say BSI, scene safety. Put your hands up in the air. BSI? Right? BSI. That means uh, body something isolation. <laughs> something. So, yeah, <laughs> well, no, I mean, hey, you're right. But, and that's... You know, glove up, mask up. These days, you got to mask up. And uh, and then scene safety. So protect yourself before you look around. And then uh, then you can get into whatever it is you need to do. So how, how has that really been, you know, with the, with COVID and everything? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's been, it's, it seems normal now almost, you know, um, I'll say that in the area I work, um, which is a rather large area, uh, we haven't really been seeing as many, um, specific calls for COVID. Cool. People used to call all the time, you know, Oh, I, I I'm having some, <laughs> some difficulty breathing or I feel like my temp, you know, my fever is high. And I was just going to ask, like of those calls, I mean, were a lot of them, was it actually COVID or was it just people that were so scared because of all the media hype that yeah. they wanted to get, they wanted to seek out some kind of medical attention? I mean, you know, I, there's no way for me to actually know if it was or not, you know. Um, yeah. I can tell you that I think a lot of people were definitely anxious mm-hmm. um, and, you know, people who are are generally prone to more anxiety related thoughts and conditions related to that probably had some trouble with it um and i know a few people still do have a lot of trouble with dealing with it because it is stressful you know it's it's not easy like everywhere you go everything you see is like it's all related to this invisible thing that can infect you and it has been killing a lot of people yeah um or at least um uh, you know keeping people out of work um uh, affecting family members um i myself actually had it at one point um and i lost completely lost my taste or smell and it still hasn't really returned really um but dang dude yeah i mean it, you know <laughs> it, it is what it is right so um but definitely it's see and they told me like i found out i'm not gonna go back to work until next year yeah i you see i mean you see we just don't we just don't uh, you, you mean well and thankfully what i do i have the benefit of not needing to be in the building like mm-hmm. my position my team that i work with is all paperless right. so there's not like a huge stress behind getting me back in there super fast or anything right. but I, I definitely feel for the people that have to you know go out and deal with that on a regular basis i mean and, and we're trying to get out more but mm-hmm. like i i definitely don't leave the house near what i what i used to right you know yeah. um so i'm sure that's been uh interesting, interesting. <laughs> to say the least interesting is definitely the word you saw, we saw the whole gamut of reactions for it and i think i think now our system's I don't want to say has a handle on it, but I, I think, kind of caught up with things a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like where we like when we see it, we know what to do mm-hmm. and how and and we're looking for those signs and we're also getting used to like how to triage more appropriately. And it's 
um, it's it's all a learning process. I mean, my phone constantly blows up with new protocol changes and and stuff from really? all the medical control. Yeah, like That's we're constantly crazy. evolving. Um, Oakland County is has been has been pretty on top of their uh, stuff, but they they're generally more communicative. Some people don't um, don't do that, but uh, they have an app where you can actually look at the protocols that you can download. See, and that's cool. Like you guys have that ability to, yeah. you know, communicate like that. I mean, I don't have mine for my for uh, work. Yeah. I don't get anything for work on my phone. I'm like, if you're gonna pay for my phone, that's fine. But you don't, so right. No, <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty cool to have a work phone. But you say that until you like, like I've had, I've got, I've, I wasn't supposed to, but I did get, a, I did get a uh, work phone call on a weekend once. I was like, this sucks, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, Excuse me. But so. Talking about just like basic preparation stuff, like I I carry, you know, I think I was just saying, you know, tourniquet, chest seal, uh, you know, gauze, and sure. uh, like some clotting agent, or whatever. Um, is that I guess is that kind of like in line with what you carry? And yours might be a little bit different because you have yeah. obviously enhanced skill set. Well, um, yeah, I mean, so I talked to a lot of people when I was preparing for this uh, podcast here because I wanted to see like what what everybody else had, what more experienced people in the field mm-hmm. had in their kits than they did. And I actually, I found out I probably need to augment mine a little bit. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I, I generally carry, um, I, I do the tourniquet. I have one in my kit that I carry with me in my backpack that's always in my car. And um, I have one in my bathroom. And I have a small apartment. <laughs> in your bathroom? <laughs> you know, that's funny. People always laugh at the bathroom. But I, I think that the bathroom is probably the place where us if you if you if you're gonna hurt yourself because there's water there's slipperiness there's that's true mirror from the glass and you know i actually heard of one story uh this guy um ended up putting his foot on like that soap shelf and then he leaned a little bit too hard and broke then, it yeah he broke right through it and you know it's ceramic so yeah sharp sharp corners he got a real good like deep deep gash on his thigh and he was bleeding profusely well and that's you're getting the major artery right there yeah you know so the, that's I mean, depending if you do it right you could really f yourself up yeah you get on the inside of the thigh it's it, it'll be over for you pretty quickly if you don't deal <laughs> with it so i i that actually is the reason i keep my is this a constant fear for you well, I mean, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, I don't put my foot up there anymore. No, I mean, yeah, I really yeah. would try to avoid that too. Like maybe, I don't know, turn and use like the side of the tub, something right. that's like a fixed yeah. there, or more there, fixed. I had, after, right after I heard that story, I had half a mind to just sit down. <laughs> in the shower <laughs> in this, and like, yeah, I'm, not like I'm not even going to attempt fate. I've seen, what was that movie? Um, uh, what is it? Uh, the one where they, you know, like they, uh, they evade death or whatever. Um. Oh man, I can't remember what it's called. I know I there's like eight of them or something. You know, Final Destination. Final Destination. Yeah, where they say. they cheat death and then the, like the whole rest of the movie they die off one by one because they. I'm like you know it's eh, maybe yeah. it could happen. I don't know. Well, you, you you don't know, and that's why it's good to be prepared. So I keep the tourniquet in my bathroom, um, and again, if I needed it for another room, it's not that far away because like, true. I have a small space that I live in. So mm-hmm. um, if you have a larger space, it might make more sense to keep one on each floor or your house or. I don't know that the tourniquets they they're a they're a last last final measure right yeah and and they're important to have because they do save lives I mean everyone in the field that I work in carries one you know mm-hmm. cops are usually the first one on scene they always have a tourniquet not you know and they use them on other people a lot you know more than you'd think that they actually have to use them um, yeah so definitely a good thing to have in there uh, actually let me open up here yeah and i know you got the trauma shears too oh uh, yeah these are just cheap little ones i uh th- it's just good to have something to cut with in case you need to get access to um, yeah well i like mean and check it out you know maybe you don't need a tourniquet right you right know? but i mean i'm sure if you had to get at something cutting off clothing or mm-hmm. i mean and honestly guys you, you just you look at other uses it might not even be something medical like right? meat you can just, cut meat with these things it's real I, good dude some of them shears. the ones i just bought for my uh my go bag um mm-hmm. There's a video on uh, Amazon of the guy cutting a penny in half. A like, penny. Oh, yeah. I was like, uh, that looks like it would hurt your hand, and it's probably a little bit overkill, but I'm not upset about it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that looks pretty can, sweet. You can get good, some good uh, some good cuttage with those. Yeah. Dude, they're, uh, honestly, it was one of the things I kind of overlooked for a while. I'm like, you know what? If I'm ever in a situation where I like, am actually trying to assess or assist with some kind of like puncture wound or bullet wound like right. that's like one of the first things that you like even reading online you obviously you see it in tv and movies but what is that worth you know mm-hmm. but like you want to see what you're working with right you know cut Absolutely. off everything you can you know or what you need to so 
Yeah. You can try and do it with a pocket knife or just try and rip it. I mean, I mean, if you're, yeah, you, you get just, you know, use, use your discretion. Cause if somebody has got a little wound on their forearm, you're not going to, you're not wow. going to strip all their clothes off, you know, <laughs> right. like expose everything, you know? Yeah. It's, it's but it's right. good to have it if you need it. It's definitely, it's, it's not ever a bad idea to be prepared. Right? Exactly. Um, which is the point of your podcast. <laughs> right. So it's just the, you know, so anyways, in my kit here, um, yeah, we have the tourniquet. Um, I carry, um, a couple different size ace bandages. Um, I got band-aids because, you know, yep. kids all the time, just everybody needs a band-aid. Um, I actually have a rip-off, um, little, uh, extra trauma bag that I can just take off. And this bag I have is super nice too. Um, now did you get this, uh, online or? Yeah. So I got this from a company called My Medic, and I think I've heard of that. They, they got some good stuff. They'll sell you like full, I mean, it's, it's geared more towards professionals in the mm -hmm. field. Um, mm -hmm. Or sometimes you can even get like uh, like people who are on a boat. You can get a good boat first aid kit. Yeah. Um, I've seen even pet first aid kits on there too. Me and my buddy were looking through it the other day. Um, but I just bought the bag and then I filled it myself, which is kind of how I recommend doing it if you're going to yeah. put together because it's a little Well, cheaper. I mean, you can – yeah, it is cheaper. If you don't know all the things, like sometimes it's just more convenient. Like yeah. just buy it pre-filled and you'll have the stuff there that you need to the have. The only thing is if you if you go and you buy it pre-filled, mm -hmm. you got to make sure that you know how to use every piece of equipment in there because That's true. you don't want to find yourself like I have this and I you know, I think I know what it's for and, and using it and not having the training to do it because if you it can be yeah, it can be almost yeah. as bad as not having right. something at all. I mean, well, yeah. You know. So and, that, and I'm sure we'll get to that. In, in <laughs> I'm later sure you probably have some stories. Oh yeah, there's a couple people times. uh yeah, I got this. No worries, bro. I know how to I don't well, know. Yeah, apply yeah. a tourniquet or I Heimlich. I don't know. Yeah, people thinking that they that they know, and you need you know just like you were talking about with uh, and a few other podcasts, getting proper training and training with mm -hmm. your equipment all the time. You know, you need you need to have good training. Well, so and uh, some of like what Sam was talking about last week with yeah. like having too much gear if you don't know how to use it, you right. don't need it and stuff. Like, um, I mean, to your point, some of these kits they sell like the the airway tubes or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Right. I'm not effing you, with that. You really shouldn't be, you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, no, I got this, bro. I saw in total recall, he shoved that thing up the guy's nose and the same thing. It'll be fine. Yeah. Like, but it's and, not. And even though, it, even if it does work like that, which I'm not, I'm not, so not saying denied, it does, <laughs> you know, um, but y yeah, you really should like that kind of stuff is, you have to know when not to use it just as much as you need to know when to use it. Yeah. And that's what, that's what classes are going to help you with in training. And it is available to like the regular person who's on a budget, by the way, like this, this information is readily, readily available. Well, and that's a good point. I mean, even if you, if you are doing it on a budget, honestly, most of the stuff I got, I bought in pieces. Yeah. You know, I would pick up some gauze because gauze is cheap, yep. you know, so I buy a bunch of gauze right. and then I spread it out between what I have on like my, my range belt or my range bag, my carb kit, whatever, you know, and then maybe the next time at the store or ordering stuff online like here i bought some chest seals or you know every once in a while i'll just buy another tourniquet yeah and i don't even know if i need it but i'll like okay you know what i know i could throw this someplace right um i think I gave one as a christmas gift last year yeah, good stocking stuffer <laughs> yeah. i think it was a stocking stuffer for my yeah. twin brother i was like mm -hmm. hey man you own guns here's another tourniquet yeah just because i needed to like there's a certain dollar amount i wanted to hit i'm like this is i know that at some point in time this may be useful. So mm -hmm. there you go. Instead Absolutely. of like some crappy socks or a tie, you got a tourniquet. Yeah. I guess it could be a tie. It's not a very good one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, disclaimer. Don't put a tourniquet on your neck. Yeah, we were talking about that. Really. <laughs> It'd be a pre-show. So that's like the first thing you learn. That's the one place you don't want to put a tourniquet. <laughs> oh, and actually a couple other places. You actually don't want to put them on any joints either. Oh, yeah. Um, just stay away from those because that... Pressure in the wrong places. Yeah, I mean, well, it's not really good. And it could damage the, the joint and uh, lots of other things, so... So what else, what do you got? You got the, uh, the tearaway bag there. Yeah. Tearaway bag. Uh, this has triangle bandages and it's got some, uh, little alcohol preps and stuff like that in there just to keep things clean. And some of that stuff I think is overlooked too. Now that I think about it, like just the alcohol swab pads yeah. are like, and honestly, those are, again, it doesn't have to be a huge medical issue. Like, nope. uh, like a cut yep. or, a, um, a little paper cut. Yeah. Or like, uh, like I go disc golfing. Um, and, uh, if you shank a shot off into some weird bushes and stuff, having either uh, you know alcohol wipes or hand sanitizer just wiped on your leg or your arms is going to save you a bunch of itching and irritation. Depending, right. on, and it doesn't have to be poison ivy. There's a bunch of plants that, depending on you personally, um, I, I have a buddy. I don't even remember what it, what, what it is, but he if he comes anywhere near it, he just he lathers up in hand sanitizer and rubs his legs all down. He's I, 
if I give this 20 minutes, I'll be itching and burning and it's, it, it's weird. I don't, it's not like a reaction, but just how my skin, I guess is a reaction, but yeah, you know, so having this stuff with you is not only the worst of the worst situations. There's like a lot of different uses for a lot of this. Everybody stuff. should have, especially if you, if you work with uh, groups of people, you know, like you and me, we, we teach band, right. Mm -hmm. And so we're in contact with, you know, kids a lot yeah. and kids aren't the most careful beings. You don't say. World. Yeah, so germy mouth breathers. Oh yeah, and, you know they'll stick everything into the germy mouth orifices. Okay, <laughs> you know. And well, I mean they're high everything. school kids, and as I think about that, I'm like, yeah, it no, they change. still doesn't yep. change. It. If <laughs> anything, it might get worse. <laughs> right. So having something to like, you know, like, hey man, I noticed you, you, you know, you're at work, and somebody's like, oh man, I got, I, I jammed my finger in this door, you mm -hmm. know, and it just is really like starting to get swollen, you know, or you know, you need like. A little band-aid clean it off first before you yeah you know and it's like at the very least it saves a trip to the go to the bathroom and then having to find the soap you just got hey just wipe it down well, with this rule. or even I, and I can tell you i work in an office yeah um and we have a first aid kit i mean mm -hmm. a we're required by law too but we have a first aid kit and a right. defibrillator and all that stuff but like i couldn't i know where my the the defibrillator is mm -hmm. i honestly don't know if a first aid kit's right next to it or if it's someplace else um i pack my own stuff right so i don't worry about it so like if I'm in the kitchen or break room, whatever you want to call it, and I'm slicing some fruit and I, whoops, slice my finger or God forbid, paper cuts. You get, No, I mean, you laugh, but like you get yourself good with some of those manila folders when they're fresh out the box. Dude, those things suck. You know, office problems, man. Uh, yeah, first world issues, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, having the stuff, I mean, it helps a little bit even, you know, when, when you need Definitely. it. And it, so, again, it doesn't have to be like car accident, gunshot, oh, whatever. Yeah. It just... You know, it's there. It's most of the time it isn't car accident and gunshot. Most of the time it's pretty mundane, and I would say I wouldn't say boring, but yeah. it's not as it's not exciting, right? Yeah, and that's okay. Yep. You know, actually, it's preferable. I would imagine. Absolutely. So I have that in my tear out thing here. Um, I got, I have tongue depressors, and it's not because I like you know looking down somebody's throat. Um, <laughs> they're actually like good little splints for fingers. Oh, okay. So, you know, if you break one in half or. Um, you use one even for like just just even like a wrist stabilizer. You know, mm -hmm. you use a couple of them and you you wrap it in a certain way. It just keeps it from moving. And that all that does is, I mean, basically all of medical, you know, emergency medical stuff is buying time. You know, I was gonna say it's like stabilizing it until you get to a hospital or exactly, somebody who can you help can get more definitive care. Right? Yeah. So you just don't want to make it worse, right? That's pretty much the goal. If yeah. you can make it better, that's great. And sometimes we can do things that make things better. You know, mm -hmm. but. For the most part, it's just like, hey, this is how it is. Let's just keep it from getting worse until we can get it to the people who can sure. fix it for good. Yeah. Or make it better. No, hey, absolutely. So, um, so I got those. I have little um, long cotton swabs. Um, those I, I would use on myself um, because they're good for wound care. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think I'll ever need them. Yeah. Um, but... Those are I, on myself. I would not stick these into anybody else's wound necessarily. Yeah. Like I just you're talking about just like your basic pharmacy cotton balls. They're like, yeah, they're but they're long. They're like cotton swabs. Oh, cotton swab. Okay, yeah. like a Q-tip type thing. Okay, Q-tip. Yeah, yeah, I guess, but they're just really long. Um, I'm not sure why the length matters, but that's just uh, the doctor's ones are always way longer, and I don't know if that's. I don't know what they're for. I don't know. With you, um, they look more professional, duh. Yeah. They can also be used as like little tiny splints if you get a couple bunch of them too. So you oh, grab yeah, if you had to in a pinch, I could see you, that. Can do, you can do it. Um, and then I have gloves, which are probably the most important thing in the kit, believe it or not. Um, you you, you want to protect yourself. Probably the most overlooked, I'm yeah, assuming. Definitely. Well, you know, you, you don't want to touch anything. Uh, my mom used to say this all the time. She said, if it's wet and not yours, don't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> Words to live by, folks. Um, so, you know, gloves are very important. Um, yeah. So you don't. You got to protect yourself first, because otherwise, you don't know what you're you're going to be getting into. I feel like we should get bumper stickers made of, of that. You yeah, know, it's I'm a pretty just, good one. Isn't yeah, it? This is pretty good. Or yeah. t-shirts made. Yeah. yeah we we could solve, we could make a killing. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Because everybody's mind goes to like the gutter when you say if it's wet. You know what I mean? Like my yep. first place went was like. Not blood and spit. It was like everything else. I'm right. like, oh. I used to think of melted ice cream for some reason because I was young and innocent. Of course you did. It to me. Yeah. Good. Well, good for, yeah. Yeah, good so for you. Like, <laughs> Your mom did her job me. then. <laughs> she did. She did a good job. Um, but yeah, so, and I have uh, tape in here, two different sizes of tape. I have two-inch tape, and I think that's one-inch tape um, in here, and that's just for 
uh, keeping, you know, wrapping the splint or keeping the bandage on or yeah. doing something to obviously. Again, probably something it. that's really overlooked. Yeah. And one thing you got to be careful with, um, and again, all this stuff is like for me mostly. Yeah. I hurt myself. Mm -hmm. um, but for other people, like some people are allergic to this tape. Oh, really? So, yeah. Some people can be allergic to the adhesive or the cloth or so something. In is it that like uh, like a latex allergy? Because I know that's a thing. It's, it's not super common. Yeah. Um, we had a buddy, I'm not going to say his name, uh, who had a who has an ex-wife that had a latex allergy, actually. And I was like, oh, I, I've never met anybody like that. Right. And when you start, when you really actually start finding out how much stuff latex is an additive in, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's like, ah, ha, 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 condoms. Like, well, right. yeah, but, okay, so then, but that's, <clears throat> you know, your basic rubber gloves. So mm -hmm. if you're, you know, it gets into all kinds of facets of life and everything. So that's, I didn't even realize that. Sure. That, that was something people had an re adverse reaction to was the medical tape. Yeah, uh, some people do, and, and generally it's not that bad of a reaction. I haven't heard of anybody that says it, you know, it has been worse, but it can. You know, you can be well, at least you don't want to make anything worse. You know, and, yeah, I, and I, I, if you're, you're in a situation, about. you're applying a bandage or something like. Mm -hmm. Clearly, something went wrong. Last thing you want to do is make it worse. Right. Oh, hey, we stopped the bleeding on your profuse gash. Yeah. But you got this skin irritation. It's going to take like three weeks to go away. Here's some cream. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, damn it. One more that. thing that went wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you're just doing like the little, oh, you know, I accidentally sliced my finger, got some tape, you ran out of Band-Aids, whatever, like just be careful with it. Um, just mm -hmm. realize that it could happen. Um, and usually people know if they're allergic to it. So they'll tell you. Um, I have some, some larger bandages and uh, some sponges in here. Um, just for larger wounds, so you know these are uh, these fold out to be like five by nine. Yeah, those are large ones. Yep. Um, and then I have some four by fours, which is just like the size of the the, the cloth on there. Yeah. Um, that's all that we're talking about. And then I have some uh, some I always call it Curlex, but it's it's the it's the bandage that you wrap around it. So it's not the bandage you apply; it's the uh, the wrapping, like the one to hold it in place. Almost. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's cling wrap. That's what I'm trying, oh, trying okay. to think. It's called cling wrap. So it just adheres to itself, so you don't really need to use too much tape. Mm -hmm. um, and this stuff is, I mean, you need to use it if you're going to be using like a bandage on something, like say your head, head or neck, something where you can't you get a great wrap stuff. on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, or if you can't use tape on it something and sometimes it's a little bit more comfortable it's also helpful for pressure because if you're stopping bleeding uh you you know Pressure's, pressure is the first yeah, thing you do necessary yeah and you you know you need to stop it so it's helpful for keeping the pressure um consistent and sure. tight so you don't have to sit there and literally hold it hold it the whole time although I mean, you could if you had to well sure you know i mean who knows how long it's going to be until you get to wherever you're going i right. mean obviously yeah i mean you're an emt so if you're there then hospital care is in the near future but if you found yourself, you know, you're one of the listeners right now and you found yourself in an ATV mm -hmm. accident, you know, knock on wood, I hope nobody does. But like, yeah, I mean, you don't want to, have to sit there and hold it yourself for an hour and a half. I mean, you will if you have to, like you said, but, right. you know, anything that helps. And what what else is that? Is it like that Gatorade? Like, uh, oh, this, this is, uh, <laughs> this is glucose. So oh. Oh, it's just like a syrup and it's. Um, oh, for diabetics. For, yeah, for diabetics. And I, this is, okay, this is one of those it's things. It's just if you get hungry. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't taste very good. It's strawberry flavored. Um, there's an orange flavor that I hear tastes pretty good. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, this this stuff is is not that great. I've tried it, and it's it's, <laughs> it's just overly sweet. And yeah, kind but of, that's the point, right? It's yeah. supposed to be to get your blood sugar right. up. This is something that I carry. This is something that my licensor I feel like allows me to assess in somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, and not that I would necessarily use it, but if I had to, like, if somebody was, um. If they knew they their needed situation, it. I they had, needed it. I had yeah. actually, like, there was a kid um, when we were, I think it was, I think it was last year, who was just, her sugar got really low. Super so, low, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I threw some, I gave her one, and it's not that much sugar. It's not like a, you know. Not to do anything, any damage. It just but, brings it up just a little bit, you know, yeah. just to bring her back into, like, reality so she could go and, and take care of herself, whatever she needed to do. So um, It's good to have. You know, it, I mean, hey. it, it is good to have. That's just something I carry in my kit. Again, I know how to use it and when to use well, it. Well, and that's to say, your, your uh, life experience gives you a, a unique yeah. perspective. You know, I would, I probably, I'll be honest with you, I probably won't add something like that to mine. Yeah. I mean, I'm not diabetic. Um, actually, I had my biometric screening, and I, you know, my blood sugar is great. I'm not even. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> nah, well, that was probably about the highlight. Honestly, I'm, you know, 
I'm not in bad shape, but it's like, oh, hey, here's your body mass index. Like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then she tries to make me feel better and I'm like, okay, thanks for mm. trying. <laughs> but That's I'm like, well, you know, at least I'm not going to be diabetic. I got that going for me and I'm yeah. gonna, I'll ride that one until it's. Keep away <laughs> from that, man. That's a, that's a, I don't, that's a hard one. I don't like. Whew. Yeah, I know we got Being some friends that uh, they have to deal with that stuff. I yeah. definitely am glad I don't I don't deal with any of that. Mm-hmm. But okay, so this is the kind of thing you carry with you, kind of day in day out. It's always in my backpack, and I take it to work um, because if you know, I mean, I, I drive around in basically a giant first aid kit. Right. So, um, but if for some reason I, you know, it flips well, yeah, but over to and from, it, if yeah. for whatever reason you do need extra stuff, I mean, you can, that's kind of the thing is you're not in a position where you're going to be walking, you know, several miles or whatever. So, yeah. uh, having more than what you need isn't, isn't a bad thing. And then obviously the nice thing about this kit though, that I have is you, it's made to be walked around with, it's got all these kind of, I mean, it's got Molly on the back. Yep. It's got two D rings on here. It's a bit overkill actually, but that's, I kind of wanted something that was just going to no, absolutely. be able to go anywhere. It actually, um, you can mount it to your backpack mm-hmm. and then the back, rips off i don't want it that's kind of loud but the whole back just rips yes yeah, so you can just pull it straight back. off if it's mounted mm-hmm. to something so well if you need to grab and go but you know we sam and i talked about this last week honestly when you say overkill i, I wish more people spent the money up front yeah. on some of their gear um because like if you're talking what you're just talking about with, uh, on a backpack right and you're hiking yep. and if that gets ripped off and you don't know about it then you're sol if something actually goes wrong right um the good kit the good gear is designed with those kinds of uh, exactly. rigors and and things those uh, those kinds of challenges in mind so um and, and it's one of those things uh that you really shouldn't um you shouldn't pick that stuff up with the goal of saving money yeah. you know because that's supposed to be saving your life so technically you're in, the, in another way of putting it is uh what do you value your life at because if you were going to be using these supplies to try and render self aid at some point mm-hmm. or you know, maybe I got shot and you were helping me or something like, do I want the cheapest stuff I could find right. <laughs> or do I want to have something that, you that know, you know maybe, gonna work. yeah, do yeah. I know it's going to work? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so much stuff out there. I don't know if you ever, if you've ever just took the time to look, but like you can find tourniquets on Amazon for like yeah. six, seven bucks. I'm like, dude, it I would took never. It a long time to find this bag. Um, it just, there's so much out there and I was... I, it took days. I was looking for days. I yeah. needed something that I wanted that I knew I could either throw in my backpack or just put in there something mm-hmm. small. I didn't need, I didn't feel like I needed like the giant thing. I don't go on a lot of hikes. I don't, you know, so I'm not going to need like larger things. I'm not going to be, I live near too many hospitals Yeah. And, and the EMS system around here is, is way too fast for me to like justify buying, um, something a little more advanced, like those in the rural, more rural parts. Like, uh, yeah, when you have to, it's going to be longer go for you to there. get someplace. Right. Then you can, I mean, th- if you're out there a lot, yeah, go ahead. You know, as long as you know how to use the equipment, mm-hmm. um, that knowledge should be yours and you should seek it out because you might save your life or somebody else's life. Well, actually there's a, there's a, 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 a gun shop around the corner from here that I know lat, uh, probably a year and a half ago, maybe mm-hmm. they actually had like a stop the bleed course. There was like a two or three hour course. And I'm like, I didn't even realize it at the time right. and I was hoping they would do it again, but then, you know, COVID hits. So then classes like that kind of got put on hold for a while and stuff. Absolutely. But that's one of the things like, do you have to be a gun owner? Like that's a great no course to take just, and they're not use a lot of them are free or at a very reduced cost. Exactly. Um, you know, a lot of times they have like, <clears throat> I think the, the, the half dummy that spits out the colored water and it's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it simulates yeah. all that stuff. It does. Uh, so, and it's like, you know what? You, take your kids and and about know, that and... um that's like the next part of like with this kit that you carry um that's only half of it okay you need you need to have the training to be able to so, use everything yeah so tell me I mean, okay you, i'm sure you probably have at least a, like a story or two like where better training would have helped or if you actually knew how to use if you know you're talking about yeah. the, the airway like yeah i got this no worries bro so, i saw it online you know, and it's like, okay, having the proper training is in fact important. Absolutely. Um, I, it's not, it's not a trauma, but there was, there was a, uh, there was a overdose that I went to one time. And, um, when me and my partner got there, it was dark. Uh, it, you know, it, we, it, it was outside of an address. It was like, I guess some friends in a car. Mm-hmm. And when we got there, there was a guy 
um, on the passenger side of the car, and he was like half out. His legs were still up in the seat, and he had he was like on the ground. And he, oh, so he basically fell on his back out of the car. Yeah. Well, so what happened was, I guess um, they were they were all up there shooting up, doing drugs, whatever. And um, one of them, he overdosed. The guy in the passenger seat overdosed, and uh, the the guy next to him freaked out, pushed him out onto the street, mind you, a busy street kind yeah. of. Yeah. Um, and just like. While the other friend was calling nine one one, just started doing uh, CPR. Okay, um, like immediate, like and not even like good CPR. You know, like like I said, the legs were up on the up on the uh, seat. He wasn't so really his legs down. were elevated. Yeah, and and his like his body was kind of weird. So he's like basically pressing down on like the left side of the chest. Mm. Um, and it was, it was it was bad. It wasn't good stuff. He wasn't, he was hurting the guy, you know, and he was still out cold right then. But well, and that's, I mean, I, they told me in my class when I took it, if you're applying CPR and you aren't cracking ribs, you're probably not doing deep enough. Yeah. yeah. But that, that happens at a certain spot on the chest. Right. right. So that's what I'm saying. I'm getting at yeah. is like, you're doing it in the wrong spot. Like who knows what you you're could, pressing on, mm-hmm. what you're going to do. Like, it's not just like, you're not, it's not gentle, um, you know, palm thrust like you see on TV. Oh, like no. it's, it's a fairly traumatic guide. Uh, it's scary process. to watch. Yeah, it's scary to watch. And you know, it's if you've ever seen. I, I hope nobody's ever seen uh, CPR have to do uh, have to been done on somebody that they know. But it's a very traumatic um, looking process. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got the chest going down. It has to go down a certain amount, and uh, it has to go at a certain speed. The stomach is going the opposite direction. The body's basically if there's nobody <laughs> doing something, the body's kind of flailing a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's it's um. It's it's a violent procedure. It's a life. It's well, okay. I shouldn't say that. I don't know if it's life. The actual life saving part is the the AED, the shocks that you get. Um, the CPR just kind of helps with the blood flow to elongate the process. Like sure. you said, buying time mm-hmm. to be able to. But get it's an help. essential part of the process. It is absolutely essential, and that's why I mean, going back to the education for a minute, I think everybody needs to be taking a CPR class. It's not that it's not hard. Um, you can do it. They there are so many resources available. Classes are offered all the time, although right now it's a little more difficult, obviously. Well, you know, and I'll, and you, you say that, and it's funny because so I took mine um, through my employer for uh-huh. free, and it's a benefit that I think yeah. most most businesses with of a de- decent size um, would offer. You know, right. it's uh, positive light, good PR, you know, all that stuff. Um, so it was just, hey, sign up. Uh, if nothing else, you get out of work for like two hours, um, and ours is just in the bottom floor of the building. No big deal. Uh, me and my boss went. There were from, and it was our company that paid for it, out of a, probably at least 60 people that were working there that day, mm-hmm. we had, um, I want to say, six. Six total. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think two of them came over from another building. Oh, wow. So I'm like, okay, so it's free CPR certification and training with somebody who knows what's going on. They had all the equipment. They had like the, I don't say dummy um, defibrillators whatever but i mean it's essentially what they were yeah uh and you know the the rubber skin on the dummies and all that and the head tilted and all the right stuff you know you could see the stomach inflate when you're blown into it and all that Mm -hmm. like it was good quality training um and i just i don't understand why more people don't take advantage of that kind of stuff i think it's i think it's just they don't either think it's uh available or it's too expensive or like you said the sometimes the benefits aren't pushed out in front of them and Mm -hmm. so they don't take advantage of it and it you know it's a shame um, because that that kind of stuff, uh, I mean, this is AHA, uh, American Heart Association. This is like from their sure. their website. I mean, they have facts on facts that, you know, early, immediate CPR, high quality CPR, as they call it, um, can actually increase somebody's chances of, of uh, surviving a cardiac arrest. And I'm not talking about a heart attack. A cardiac arrest is just anybody, it can happen to anybody at any time for any reason, you know. So what is the difference? Um, so, I mean, a heart attack is, is, is like a, uh, it's when your heart loses oxygen, there's a blockage or something okay. and, and some of the muscle, it stops functioning essentially. Uh-huh. Um, and you know, trying to put this in simple terms, um, yeah. it, your heart stops effect, effectively pumping the, right. the stuff that it needs. It stops doing the job that it needs to do. Right. right. Um, so then it just, then it starts like, uh, stopping. Right. So that's. That's a heart attack, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a cardiac arrest is when the heart actually st- is. It is what happens after a heart attack. Okay? Uh, oh, okay, okay. So, so, like, 
one follows the other, but they're not. Ex- they don't necessarily have to be exclusively paired. Yeah, you can be having okay. a heart attack and going about your day. I mean, people have gone hours, a, a day or two, while having a heart attack. Um, but the cardiac arrest is when the heart stops pumping uh, rhythmically, or too f- sometimes um, it starts vibrating. Um, and there's a term for that. It's called um, V-fib. Uh, and that's and that's the shockable rhythm. Actually, uh, well, is it V-fib? I, there was, I, actually, I did have a student, because we were taught teaching band. I had a yeah. student who uh, actually had one of those conditions. Um, I don't know if it was AFib, V-fib, something like that. I remember I don't know. her, right? Um, yeah. They found her uh, in the women's bathroom on the floor. Yeah. And a, another faculty member had brought her in because we were rehearsing inside. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. You know, talking to her after the fact. Um, she came clean and was like, yeah, I knew about this. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to lose my spot. You know, yep. and I, it's, it was tough. You know, she was really upset. She had, but she played the heaviest instrument, yep. you know, uh, and I'm like, okay, you, we can't, you know, and she was upset. She said, I don't care. I'll do it. Nope. She was a trooper though. Yeah, she no, really she was, was her credit. She got back up and was dealing with stuff. I'm yeah. like, you know what? You need to just take it easy. Like uh, nothing is worth putting yourself in that kind of situation. Over. Yeah. And I mean, that's a good illustration of it can happen to anybody. Um, even if it's not heart attack related, it could be. I don't know. You could have, uh, you know, you can just your heart blood stop sugar for any or reason. Any, yeah, any kind of situation. There's, really, there's so many, there's so many strange things that happen with the human body. Um, it just stops. Sometimes it just malfunctions. You know, yeah. and that's scary. Like, so uh, that's why it's important to know the, these kinds of skills because because it can be so widespread and it could happen at any moment. Well, and even more to that, regular doctor's visits. I mean, yeah. I, have a, I definitely do have a brother who has not been to the doctor in at least five years. Yeah. And I'm like, why not? Oh, it's expensive, and oh, uh, yeah, I don't need to go. I'm like, listen, dude, I get it. No one likes doctor. Like, I hate doctor visits and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but, dude, take care of yourself. You have to. If you don't, who is? Right. You know, and you don't want it to be. I mean, not a dig at you, but you don't want it to be the guy showing up on the scene who's resuscitating you or whatever. You know, what I mean? oh like, yeah, definitely not. Just avoid. You know, hit the the issue before it gets to that point. Yeah. You know, take care you of yourself. Can. Discover exactly. those issues. Lower your chances as much as you can, and be yeah. prepared for for anything. Um, and that's that goes along with this kit too. You know, there's a there's a course that the American Heart Association offers, and lots of lots of places you can get this too. But. <clears throat> Um, I just I'm just picking a reputable source here. Yeah, um, they offer a, a, a first aid class, and it's not just you know sticking a band aid on things. I mean, they're teaching you uh, about different medical conditions that 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 you may encounter. You know, diabetic problems, um, seizures. Uh, Which honestly, I uh, I actually had somebody uh, I was I want to say seventh grade or eighth grade girl who sat like next to me in a uh, science class. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were watching. I don't know, like Shark Week or something. We were watching a video, so it was dim in the room. She just fell out of her chair yep. and started seizure, seizing on the floor. And what did you think in that moment? Like, uh, I didn't know what to think. Honestly, yeah. I remember being really freaked out because yeah. it didn't last very long. She came out of it, I mean, maybe 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. Um, she knew exactly what had happened was going on. And what right. you could tell it was not her first time going through that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, I freaked out. I'm like, this girl just like falls out of her chair. I'm like, what the hell? It's, did somebody push her? Like, yeah. and then you start process and that's really why we talk so much about like your you know training and uh, either with medical firearm anything uh it takes you a second Mm -hmm. to realize what's going on and start processing if you're not ready to to deal with that or you've never dealt with that or thought about it um which means seventh grade not at the forefront of my mind (laughs) right and honestly probably not today either and the the fun thing about seizures is not the fun thing but (laughs) you know they're just as shocking to watch. Like they're scary too, you yeah. know, just like CPR is like, it's not, it's not normal to see somebody fall out on the ground and either start shaking or just completely be unresponsive or twitch or something, you so know, if you, if someone is having a seizure, like, I, you know, I was watching the movie Black Hawk Down and they're like, oh yeah, put something in his mouth or something. Like there's so much information out there. Are you supposed to do that? So, uh, this is this is where that training kind of comes in, right? Yeah. Um, the reason that probably we're saying to put something in his mouth was so he didn't bite his tongue. Okay. You know, so... Uh, well, because I was watching my wife, she goes, you're not supposed to do that. I'm like, but they just... Yeah, <laughs> what you don't want to do is put something in somebody's mouth when they can't control their own mouth. Uh, that's a good point. Because it's a choking hazard. Um, yeah, yeah, they might they might bite their tongue and it happens. But the best, I, I, I want to kind of shy away from giving as much medical no, advice I, as I can. I get it. But uh, the, the best, best thing to do if you see somebody with a seizure is call 911 and mm-hmm. just make sure that they don't 
like hurt themselves while having it. Yeah. You know, that's, um, I, that's what you can do immediately. And, and that's what, that's what a course like this would teach you. You know, they'll, they'll teach you how to manage it. You basically can't do anything for the person having it. Now, do you know, is this like these courses and stuff? Is it, I assume it's probably listed on their website and yep, stuff. Absolutely. Like, you can find it right on their website. It's uh, I think the, the course, when I looked it up, it was about $60. So mm -hmm. it's pretty inexpensive for this course. It's really not bad. Nope. Um, I mean, if any of you guys have uh, looked into any like gun-related courses, shooting courses, CPL classes, um, I think you said before the show you just took your CPL. I mean, I, I meant you probably spent what seventy-five bucks. Oh man, it was it was cheaper than I thought. I, it, I yeah, I think it was like sixty, seventy-five bucks for it. Yeah, I, I was thinking it was going to be pretty expensive. Um, but and if wasn't. you get into anything like your even your basic uh, like handgun operator one or rifle operator one, those classes, a you got to bring your own ammo, which is super expensive, especially right now. Mm -hmm. um, but those are like two hundred fifty, three hundred fifty, four hundred fifty dollar classes and stuff. So um, you kind of got to look at it with the the mindset of what am I getting for the money that I'm paying, mm -hmm. um, and honestly, as far as uh, <clears throat> you know, usable, uh, valuable information goes, I would say that this is probably towards the top of the list. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, again, I just, uh, with shooting, you can learn a lot through watching stuff on like YouTube. You can pick up a lot of stuff. You can figure out what does and doesn't work for you, you know, guess and check. You can't do that with medical. Um, and I would really, I know you, you said you're not trying to give any medical advice. The one piece of advice I will give everyone is do not get your medical advice from YouTube. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> um, not. I mean, you do you. But uh, I don't know how awesome I feel about that, you know. Yeah. Um, there's a difference between just watching that stuff like, ooh, that's, you know, uh, like when I got my wisdom teeth out, my buddy, uh, my buddy Nick told me, whatever you do, don't go look it up on YouTube. Which, of course, I went home. It was like the first thing I did. And I was like super freaked out oh, about yeah. it. Um, you know, so some of that stuff's yeah. like, okay, it gives you like that, uh, that wow factor. You're like, oh, okay, cool. But don't – you really shouldn't watch uh, – you know, YouTube videos for your medical instruction, unless it's, if by some odd mean you can verify the per, like the, the quality. Yeah. Uh, like, if you, I, don't, I don't know how you would do that, but, um, See, the thing about, you really should be careful about what you consume and yeah. what you take it for value. You know, the instructors who instruct these courses have to take an instructor course from the organizations or places that they're trying to teach these courses to. So like if you go on YouTube and you see some person up there trying to, Oh yeah, here's how you, I don't know, um, pull traction on a, on a broken femur, you know, that person is not, <laughs> you, I mean, even if they have all the qualifications in the world, like I don't mm -hmm. care if they're, you know, they're a doctor, that's great. Good for them. Um, that person it's a little bit unethical for them to be giving that advice out because the layman is not going to understand. Like there are certain conditions Absolutely. when you can and can't do something and they need to be taught by somebody who's licensed to teach these things. And there's mm -hmm. a reason that it's like that. Um, it's just like, you know, uh, how you can't go get your CPL from anybody other than a, a certified instructor, a certified instructor because they're, they're teaching you the nationally accepted, um, a way to do a certain thing that's usually backed up by the world's current yeah. research. Well, I mean, and, and honestly, sadly, uh, it's not even that good for CPLs, really. But there's, well, well, you know, legally speaking, there's certain points they hit for certain reasons. Yep. You know, like stuff that they talk about in those classes, uh, you know, there's a reason. You know, now, could I teach somebody how to shoot? Could I teach somebody some of the tips and tricks to carrying a concealed pistol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. I can, through my own experience, I can say, Hey, I like this. I didn't like this. I would do this. I wouldn't do that. Yep. Do I think that that necessarily makes me a certified someone to certify, um, somebody else, um, in some ways, maybe in a lot of ways, no. Uh, and the biggest one is I don't want to be liable for anything that happens. Sure. Um, cause you don't know what someone's going to do with that information once mm -hmm. they leave that room. Um, yeah. and you know, medical malpractice is a thing. A <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, take it all with a grain of salt. Now, I'm not saying not to go out and do your own research. Um, I, and I don't know about you, but in my experiences with a lot of things, uh, I find that if you go out and find 20, 25 sources on things, you can start to try and get down to a root of a, yeah. of what you're looking at. Um, whether it's shooting or anything else. Uh, but if you really want to learn how to do it the right way, 
you should seek out the professional yeah. assistance. And it doesn't really make sense. I mean, you're you doing all that work yourself is kind of doing it the hard way. You know, yeah. you're spending a lot of time spending, and a lot of. I energy. spent sixty-seven and a half hours researching from thirty-two accredited right. sources. Like, or or you could take in one three-hour class and save yourself a lot of time and grief. Exactly, it's all there for you. They present it, and you even get a cool little certificate. I think so. You could put something up on your fridge. Well, I'm gonna do it just for the certificate. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I really like. The I tried ribbon. Mm -hmm. That's really all I want. So, um, okay, so before we wrap up, like, what's the? I mean, you have like a, a story you can share, just like a totally you want shock to. value story. Oh, I mean, because I feel like you probably see some pretty gnarly stuff. Like, I, I, I mean, yeah, like you know, I'm I have what's called a little bit of a white cloud. A what? Um, yeah, and that's that's a term we use at the, the company I work for um, to describe somebody who doesn't really have a lot of bad stuff happen around them oh, so well that's good it's good i mean i still i mean don't get me wrong like you know there's some stuff i've seen it's just that's bad it's just you know there are people out there who every time they go on their shift it's like they shooting, see horrific shooting, shit yeah like you decapitation like you know you, like just have crazy you dealt stuff. with have you dealt with the shooting before um <laughs> so my no i actually haven't had a uh an actual shooting i've had a but the shooting i have had is <laughs> um so here's here's what here's what happened um we got i just got on shift right so okay. we were leaving the gate and um no is that like i'm just gonna ask before you get too far into it sure. is that like every other job where like you want to be left alone for like the first half hour and so you have time to like settle into your work mindset and if anybody bothers you in that first half hour you're just like kind of motherfucker yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of, yeah, I never really thought about it, to be honest. With I you, do, you know, yeah. I, I work in eight to five, but I know mm -hmm. when I like log in, I want to just like have my first cup of coffee, mm -hmm. check some email. I don't want to answer a phone call. Right. Please don't come talk to me. Yeah. You know, like I just need some time to acclimate myself to be a proper human being. Right. And I, because it's morning, but uh, yeah, I attribute it more to just because I'm at work. But that's, that's, you know what? <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. It, I do kind of feel like that. It is a little bit jarring when you're just, you're just, I just sat down. I just got all my stuff. I'm about to get like ready in the mindset right mm -hmm. and then you know the radio chirps up and we gotta go rush somewhere for something okay and so in this situation that's what happened we charged right out of the gate went to this uh this um this place where this kid i guess said he had been shot um and they didn't give us any other information except for that um is that typical or yeah they'll like, just say he said he was shot and they don't give you any other information. They, they will do their best to give us as much pertinent information as possible. Well, that's good. Okay. Um, but a lot of times, you know, it's a game of telephone, right? So, um, they, either the person on the other end doesn't really know the information or it never got down to us, or it's just not really relevant. Sometimes it's just, sometimes it's hard to be specific with things. Um, so we generally get dispatched with minimal information. We get, we get an idea of the call type, um, and then we kind of get a little notes on specifically kind of what the deal is, like what the chief complaint is. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of just go and we figure it out from there. Um, usually if it's a dangerous situation like a shooting, we'll be told the to stage. Um, so this was a little bit weird that we got called immediately. So we were kind of thinking that, you know, police were already there. Already on the scene. Yeah. And uh, so we were like, all right, so they must be there. This must be like a real thing. Um so we went, you know, charged out the gate, lights and sirens, barreling down, you know, uh, places we shouldn't be doing too much speed. At, right? <laughs> and uh, we we pull up and we get outside the complex and it was this kind of big tower complex and there's this kid standing out there. And I'm like, oh, man, maybe he probably there's no police anywhere. So okay. we're like, uh, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. Like, what are we at the right place? Is it OK for us to go in there? Um, but he's waving us down. So we're like, all right, well, we're going to go see what's happening here. And um my partner was pretty gung-ho about it, so I felt pretty safe, like, you know, just getting into situations <laughs> with him. Um, so we pull up, and this kid's waving us down. He's wearing this red sweatshirt, and we're like, all right, uh, did you call? He's like, yeah. And we're like, well, were you shot? And he's like, yeah. And we're like, where? <laughs> where were you shot? Because he's standing up. He looks fine, right? Yeah. So I'm like, what's going on? Like, what were you shot with? And he's like, oh, I was shot in my arm. And I'm like, well, can we see? And he's like, oh, yeah. And he pulls up his sleeve, and there's a little, like, little tiny red mark on there. Um, and we're like, well, what 
What were you? Sh what were you shot with? The world's smallest, like, <laughs> like Glock. What is that? Like, uh, he's like, oh, you know, my girlfriend. She shot me with an airsoft rifle. I was like, <sighs> what? <laughs> what do you mean airsoft rifle? She was like, or he was like, uh, yeah, she got mad at me, went downstairs, got my airsoft rifle and shot me with it. And I figured if I called 911, you guys would get here faster so I could make a police report. And <laughs> dear God, man. So my partner just, <laughs> my partner, uh, I was actually, I was really proud of him the way he reacted because normally, and if it was anybody, it must've been at the beginning of the shift. He just wasn't ready yet, you know? He, he was nice to the kid, and it was just like, well, yeah, we're going to go now because you're fine, right? Yeah, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm good. I don't need to go to the hospital or anything. And we're like, all right, yeah, that's cool. So that was my that was my shooting. I mean, I've had a couple stabbings, which are probably a little more gruesome. I've had a pedestrian versus car, which is I had to replace my uniform after that one. Ooh. Yeah, got brain matter all over myself. and uh, That's rough. That one, that's actually a cool driving story, though. But uh, when I, I And I get stuff like that when I talk to uh... – I'm not going to say his name. He might be on in a future episode, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. We have a friend who's a uh, a law in law enforcement here. He used to teach band uh, with us and stuff. And he's got um, – I think he's been doing it a little bit longer than you have, but he's got some pretty messed up oh, I'm sure. you know, scenes he gets called to, especially on the freeway. It's always yeah. on the freeway that the worst stuff happens. Yeah. And I'm like – Well, if he's in law enforcement, <laughs> they – I, I really do think that there's a lot of stuff that they see in its natural state that by the time I get there, it seems usually controlled mm -hmm. and there are not really any surprises. Like these guys, they walk into the cops, walk into Just, they walk in the as it is. Yeah. yeah. And that's, it's jarring. I, bet. I can't imagine half the stuff you've seen. Like I, I work in the, in finance. So mm -hmm. I like the worst stuff I ever see is like people screaming at each other over, TPS reports or something. Oh, I mean, we yeah. don't have TPS reports. I'm just anybody who's seen uh, Office Space, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can only imagine. Um, I honestly, I hope I never deal with any of that stuff. But uh, I hope you don't either. Yeah, it's, it can be kind of gruesome, you know. And I don't. I think a lot more people can deal with it. Like if you're not really yourself when you're looking at these things, you know, you just kind of like go into a different. You're a different person. It's yeah, just like you just gotta just mentally prepare yourself to deal with it, and then yeah. like compartmentalize that time when you're getting there um is very important to kind of calm yourself down and just be like all right whatever i'm about to see like it's all good it's not my emergency um i will we'll deal with it we'll do our best and uh yeah so i don't know i'm trying to think of a good one though it's like what do you we want like a uh, no i mean if that's uh, honestly I, that's you know it just it, it i guess i'm not that surprised mm -hmm. um based on uh i don't want to call it the climate of the world we're in but just the way the world is now people don't um i'll just you don't have there's not the same amount of respect for first responders and take that however you will um in a lot of different ways obviously like as a, as a kid growing up i would have never and we had airsoft guns mm -hmm. albeit briefly because you can imagine with four boys growing up um how about how long that lasted <laughs> my mom was not having it yeah, once she yeah. realized what those things were she instantly regretted buying regretted buying them for us and my dad broke them all he's like nope yeah. that's it uh-uh not dealing with it but I would never have called 911 for anything. Um, hell, I mean, and we went through, uh, I mean, I flipped over my, I, I've had to have stitches and stuff before. Um, I had one brother drop kicked the other brother into a corner of a, of a coffee table. He had to get like four staples in his head and he was only like five. Mm -hmm. We never, we didn't call 911 for that. We just took him to the ER. Um, I had the, the two younger brothers playing on the couch together, jumping up and down, dislocated a shoulder, didn't call 911 for that, you know, so it just it always blows my mind, um, either, you know, watching live PD, you know, when it was on, uh, mm -hmm. or cops when it was on, um, and then even hearing stuff like that, people call for some of the, just the dumbest reasons. And I'm like, yeah. I get it if you really, truly don't know, but don't just call to call. Right. I mean, it's kind of, cause it's, you're taking people like you away from somebody that may actually need yeah, that assistance need, they need, yeah, um faster. and if that pulls you 15 minutes further away from where this other incident may be then mm -hmm. it's like okay well that's that's a difference maker right uh so i just yeah i don't and you know i think that comes i think a lot of that comes down to um like education as well about what it is like especially when it comes to like medical stuff right mm -hmm. there a lot of people just don't know and including myself like before i started doing this i was probably the most uneducated person in the medical field ever. Um, I, I didn't really understand like what the serious true emergencies are and what doesn't really require. Um, yeah. I remember when you told me, I was like, you're going to be an EMT. Yeah. At one point you were like, yeah, I'm a criminal justice major at school yep. and stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then yep. yeah, I'm an EMT. I mean, 
when did that happen? Complete switch, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was a bit of a shock when I started learning, and that's actually when I started believing. I'm like, wow, like more people need to learn about this stuff. Yeah. Um, general, I think just general care and preparation. Yeah. I mean, honestly, really, you don't even if you should get the training, but even if you just have the supplies with you, that's already a step yeah. in the right direction. Why not? Um, if somebody else is there that yeah. maybe has the skills but doesn't have the materials, whatever mm-hmm. you know, uh, somebody on vacation or whatever, a doctor that's out to lunch or something. You know what I mean? Like you don't know yeah. who's going to be there in that situation. So uh, being more prepared is never a bad thing. Absolutely. Really. And we were talking earlier about having equipment that's like kind of task specific. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just a good thing to have. You know, you don't, do you really want to be wrapping up like a, like a, a life threatening wound with like a torn up shirt? Yeah. You know, or like a, to, but a dress belt or something, you know, some kind of for a tourniquet. Yeah. It, will it work? I mean, maybe, yeah. uh, is it designed to be used, be used that way? Obviously not. Right. Um, so having this stuff is definitely, it's beneficial. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, you know, and so we always talk about do the research, uh, figure out what's going to work best for you guys. Um, you know, we talked about in here, if you live close to hospitals, if you live far away, uh, if you hunt a lot, you know, or, or carry a firearm, uh, you know, obviously if you can create holes, you should also be carry the stuff with you to plug holes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's all important considerations. Um, if you have children, do you need, uh, more or less, like if you're always traveling with kids, you probably need more medical supplies because there's more people, uh, or something that's maybe specific to smaller limbs. There's different tourniquets for different applications that work better with different things. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. So just put the time in, spend the money where it counts, uh, and just be smart about it. Absolutely. You know, um, but Hey man, Thanks for you know coming on. Oh, this yeah. has been awesome, um, and then hopefully in the future we'll have you on again to yeah, we'll talk about this to. stuff. Uh, I want to hear more about how your CCW stuff goes. Yep. You know, you're going to be uh, probably purchasing your first firearm in mm-hmm. the near future well, if you can find anything in stock. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we'll talk more about that and everything. But uh, it's been awesome, man. Thanks. Ah oh, man, so glad to be here. Thanks. All right, that's it for us, and uh, we'll have more for you guys next week. Until next time, be prepared. Mm-hmm.